Hello, good evening. Welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, whether you like it or not, and thank you for joining me. So they came to Occupy. Oh, you know, the, the white, privileged, silly, usual types who always moan on about how much oppression and injustice there is out there. And to prove how tough their lives are, they use their expensive iPhones and Blackberries, the product of the genius of capitalism, by the way, like most discoveries and advances, to tell the world of their pain. Now, irony doesn't seem to exist in the minds of these pampered poops who also fail to appreciate the fact that the clean parks, safe streets and good restrained police are all part of the greatness of the very society they purport to despise. Oh, and speaking of the cops, if this really was an Arab Spring, which the protesters risibly boast, you'd have been shot down by uniformed thugs by now. At the very hour that these bourgeois comrades were posing for souvenir photos and the media cameras, demonstrators in Yemen and Syria were being blown apart by large caliber bullets fired at point-blank range by the very Islamic fascists so popular with the occupation crowds. Look at their posters if you want proof of where they stand. One of the most telling anecdotes from the Toronto occupation this weekend was the experience of a young man operating a fast food restaurant across the road from the park where they were camped. Now, he's the son of immigrants, has worked hard all his life, has not had the advantages of so many of the protesters. He served the crowd, but he ran out of food. They became angry. He said, I was really disappointed at the way they treated me. Uh, th they were rude, demanding and threatening. When I ran out of food and had to lock the door and put up a sign saying food will be 15 minutes, they began cursing and banging their signs on the window. Oh, darling, you just can't get the staff and the services at demos these days. And then the old silver-haired careerist Bob Ray arrived because super wealthy and super connected Bob acutely understands the plight of the oppressed and the downtrodden. He wandered around the park and spoke to occupiers, no doubt curing them of their ailments with a touch of his royal hand. What Bob did not ask is, where do you people get off claiming to represent 99% of the population? If that were the case... Why were there so few of you in Toronto? Why just a hundred in Winnipeg? Why a very weak showing in Montreal and Ottawa? If you have the support of 29 million Canadians, where were the numbers? Well, I'll tell you. Normal, balanced, real, tax-paying Canadians were with their families, junior hockey, shopping, working on the house, working overtime to save for Christmas or a, a vacation, hanging out with the kids, taking their wife or girlfriend out for a date, you see, that's what normal, balanced, real, tax-paying Canadians do. And they are the 99%. Not you freaks with your government grants, your public sector jobs, and your perennial chip on your shoulder, and constant sense of paranoia and persecution. Another word for occupation is job. Go and get one.